Well, you get to that stage in the match and uh, you're going to need a bipod on the front of that rifle. And if you don't have the right kind of bipod, it can cost you some points. Hi everyone, it's the Four Gun Guy. And today I want to talk to you about bipods. I'm very fortunate that uh, everything kind of came together and I have three different bipods that we're going to talk about. I'm going to just go through the pricing of each of these options. And then we're going to go out to the range and we're going to see them in action and see why one or two might be the choice over others. So if you're ready to go, let's get started. Well, okay, I'm going to start with the uh, Atlas bipod first. Now, I mounted it on the rifle, and uh, this is my Voodoo V22. <clears throat> so, but I, I wanted to show you a few things. Now, I've got another camera off to the right here. I hope all this is going to work, but that one should be able to show you like the cant and, and some other things here. But the Atlas bipod basically is... Uh, is a basic bipod. It's a good bipod. I've been using it for two years on both rifles and there are some good things about it and some limiting things about it. So let's talk about the functionality first. So let's say that, that you're starting out on a stage, you start on a PRS barricade, right? You take your shots and now you've got to deploy the bipod because maybe you're going to go uh, into the prone position or shoot off of a table or something like that after that. Well, to deploy the bipod, there are two, but there are these buttons here, right here, that I will use to deploy the bipod. Now, I've gotten used to doing this, and I can do it fairly, fairly easily and fairly quickly. So, so I've got this deployed, and now I can come down and I can cant the rifle. Now I want you to see, I'm going to try to pick this up on this other camera. I want you to see how much of an angle I can cant this rifle on. Now the other thing that I can do with the Atlas is I can also pan. So if I keep this here, you can see how the bipod is staying stable, but the rifle is actually panning on it. Uh, according to one of the best shooters in our uh, region, who I had the, the uh, privilege of shooting with this past weekend at the uh, Ruger 22 Rimfire Nationals, uh, he saw me shoot like this and, and he took me aside afterwards and he said, you really want a bipod with no panning in it. He said, because you may, and this other video will hopefully pick this up, you may deploy those legs and you may be in a hurry and now you've got things at a pan and now you're fighting the panning of the rifle. If this was on an uneven surface, like a, like a rooftop, you're shooting off a rooftop that you know we do sometimes, if it was on a surface like that, it could be, it could really get in your way and now you're fighting another angle uh, to build your position in. So you really do not want a uh, bipod with uh, the panning ability, or if it does have the panning ability, you want to lock that down so it does not pan. Those were his words of advice. He's the number one shooter in the region, so I'll listen to him. But, so now let's say that I, I'm down in position, right? Got this thing down here, and now I've got to, I realize that my legs are not deployed enough. Now I have to, with, the, with this, I have to, lift the gun and it's got these buttons here. You see these buttons. I hope you can see that on this other video right here that I'm having to pull on to deploy the legs. That takes time. That takes thinking. It takes energy. And there's a lot that goes into that. So the other thing that I do like about the Atlas is I can pull both these legs totally back or I can deploy them totally forward. Okay. So I can get it out of the way when I don't need them there. Uh, I can leave them like this up. If I do need to deploy quickly, pushing the button, pushing the button, and I'm deployed, and now I'm down in my stance. So that's the Atlas bipod. Uh, the one thing about the Atlas is 
These range from say 275 to 325. And I've had to purchase Arca adapters for these things from either Really Right Stuff or this one is from, um, I think, Wiser Precision. And they're running anywhere from $60 to $80. So at the end of the day, you're still up around $400 for a bipod like an Atlas. So now let's look at the, uh, let's look at the AccuTac. Now, I got this AccuTac off the prize table at that Nationals match. Uh, so I got this for free. This is about a $320 uh, bipod. And I'm going to tell you right now, if, if I had $320 to spend on a bipod, and it was between the Atlas and this AccuTac, I'd choose the AccuTac all day long. This thing is built, it feels like it's built like a tank. Now the Atlas is too, but this thing just has a totally elevated level of manufacturing in it, I think. You can see it here, let me turn my video on to this. You can see it here uh, deployed. There's some interesting features about this one. Now it does not have the pan capability, so that's good, we don't want, or I, yeah, the pan capability, but it does have the cant capability. So let's look at the cant, and that's done by this, by a knob right here underneath. And now I can cant. This cant is about probably a little more than the Atlas. It's about maybe 20 degrees, 25 degrees. I think the Atlas felt like it was maybe 15 degrees or something like that. The other thing I like about this uh, uh, bipod is, if you look at these adjustment knobs, you notice that I can, this is for the Arca rail, and it just tightens up, right? But if I want to adjust how this tightens, I simply pull this knob out, and now I can adjust where I want it to end up after it's tightened. I might want this to end up just the way it is right here, kind of flush with the, with the chassis. Right, maybe I don't want it to end pointing down. So you can really adjust this thing. I'm not loosening it here. I'm just adjusting where I want this thing to end up. So that's a really nice feature. I will say that that this, this lever sticking out like this kind of bothers me if I have to place the rifle with the with the bipod collapsed, right? in a tighter spot, this would stick out. So that's a, little, that's a little negative there. But let's talk about deployment now. So deployment is a little different on this one. Deployment here is like this. I pull on the leg and I can deploy it. Pull on the leg, I can deploy it. Now it will only come back 45 degrees. It won't come all the way back, right? So I can bring it back 45 and it's just a little pull. I'm just very lightly pulling on that leg. So I kind of like that. There's no, there's no button here to push. There's no anything like that. So let's look at what would happen if we had to deploy. We come off our PRS barricade. We come down. I'm pulling out, pulling out, and now I'm deployed. It's that fast. Not bad. And I'm just using this, guys. I've very literally taken these things out of the box just before the video. So I'm, I'm looking at them the same way you are. Now, I showed you the cant. So if I loosen this up, there's that cant. And it's again, I'd say 20, 25 degrees, not bad. And now let's look at what happens if we get in position and I have to make an adjustment, right? It's not tall enough. Well, in this one, there's nothing, there's nothing to hold down. I can literally just pull these legs out literally pull the legs out and then they're spring loaded so i can just pull them right back in show you that this way pull out pull out and now i'm there i will say if i'm down in position and i need to add height that's pretty nice i can literally just do that and do that and now i'm there i really like that feature here so uh, let's see i think that's it for the uh, AccuTac, I, I'm telling you, this is an awesome bipod. And again, if you were going to spend, oh, by the way, 
by the way, this comes with the Arca attachment. So this thing's 317 bucks with the Arca attachment. Remember, the Atlas, is you're either going to get a more expensive Atlas, or you're going to get the base model, and then you're going to have to add the Arca attachment for 60 to 80 bucks. This AccuTac, to me, is an excellent bargain. It's a great bargain. And remember, I'm not getting anything from any of these companies for, for doing this, guys. I'm just, I just happen to have these three available, and uh, I decided to do a video on them. But I, I really like this AccuTac. Let's, uh, let's move on to the uh, SkyPod. All right, let's move on to the SkyPod here. I'm going to tell you some interesting things about this bipod. So let's get started here with... Number one, the, the legs. Now the legs are just like the other ones, right? I can fold them up like this, right? Just like this. If I want to deploy them, there's a little lever here. And that little lever, I just push it in and deploy, push it in and deploy. And again, I can deploy 45 degrees or I can deploy fully 45 or 90. I cannot, I cannot deploy these legs backwards. You can't do that with this, with this uh, bipod. So if that's a big thing for you, then you're probably going to want to look at something else. The reason you can't do that, which is good for me, and I'm used to pushing in on the Atlas, so these you just pull, uh, push this knob down. I got to get used to that, is because if you look on the back here, there's actually a, uh, a uh, barricade stop right here. So that's a really nice feature. I can simply take this off, turn it around if I need a, if I need a barricade stop, and I can uh, deploy it. So I can do that that way. The build quality of this is really good, but I'm telling you what, that AccuTac feels much more solid than this SkyPod. Uh, if you look at this, see how that's, see how that's kind of doing that? You had none of that with that AccuTac. Now, a little play is no big deal for me, right? As long as it's not like this when it's deployed. So if I deploy this, now I do that. Oh, wait a minute. There's some play there. There's, there's a bit of play. That could be, and I think I read somewhere that that is on purpose. So you're not locked so hard into the position of the bipod. Don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I read. Let's look at uh, leg deployment. Oh, and by the way, this does not have the pan capability, which is good, right? We just said we don't want the rifle to pan on the bipod. We want can't, but not pan. So now let's look at this deploying these legs. So let's do go through a little drill here. The legs are up. I'm coming off my PRS barricade. I have to go into prone or some other position. All I'm going to do is do this, do this and I'm there, okay? Very nice, very quick, very nice to deploy. Now, here comes, here comes the, uh, I'll say kick in the head part of it. I'd like to say something else, but I won't. Uh, the kick in the head part is, if I want to use the cant in this, in this specific model, this specific model, I have to have an Allen key with me. So I have to come up here in this video I'll show. I have to come up here, stick my Allen key in this little hole, turn it, and then I can cant. What is that? Right? If you call MDT, they'll send you the little knob that they have on their newest models for $50. Luckily, Short Action Custom has a, a, a knob for 20 bucks, 25 bucks. So I ordered that, so now I can, with my fingers, unleash the cant or lock the cant down. But MDT, it really bugs me. I know this was Gen 1, but even for Gen 1, for a Gen 1 product, why wouldn't you have looked out at bipods and realized that people either want to lock the cant down or they want the cant, and you need to be able to do that just before a stage, for example, right? So anyway, it's just something that really kind of, kind of bugged me about this, this bipod. So let's look at the cant of this bipod. So I'm going to aim it here. And now let's look at the cant. The other ones, remember, were about 20 degrees. And this one is, wow, look at that. 
This thing's like 45 degrees. Look at this. That's even more than 45 degrees. This thing is like unbelievable for, for cant. And you're wondering, well, so what? What does that mean? Well, what that means is if I'm on an uneven surface like a rooftop, having to shoot off a rooftop, you know, those stages, that cant can really come into, into play because, and I'm gonna lock this down, uh, because it just adds another layer of your ability to be, um, to be perpendicular with the target, right? Or horizontal with the target, however you wanna look at it. Uh, it, adds, it really adds to your ability to do that. Now let's look at the deployment of the legs. Deployment of the legs, very similar to the AccuTac. Deployment of the legs, I simply pull down, pull down. If I want the legs to come back up, I have to manually bring them up. So whereas the AccuTac, the legs, remember, I, I pushed the, the switch at the top here and the legs just automatically retracted. This, you're gonna have to bring them back up. But I'm gonna tell you what I like about this. The clicks, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. They're easier, they're not so close together as the AccuTac. It's, you're just gonna have to really think about what you really want out of your bipod uh, and what's going to be right for you. Now, I've, I've kind of beaten this one up a little bit, but I'm going to tell you why I love this bipod. <laughs> and, and none of the others that I've shown you here today, and not a lot of others do this. Let's come back to our camera here. Now I'm in the prone position, and I want to be super super stable, right? Super stable. Well, I can come out to all the way out to here. Look at that. Look at how stable that is. If you can see that from this video angle. And then I can deploy the legs. And now look at this. Look at how wide those legs are. Look at the stability that's going to give you. So let's get out to the range now and let's see how these might look, function in action on some of those, uh, uh, some of those props. All right, well, we're at the range and I have a, a confession to make. <laughs> I went ahead and sold both those Atlas uh, bipods, so those won't be included in, in what we're gonna do out here at the range. Um, yeah, you know, I just used these two, the last match. Actually, I didn't even use the MDT. I used this AccuTac the whole match and I loved it. But I still wanna give both a fair shake. I wanna to talk to you about when you might wanna use what and which one I, overall I think is the best or do you wanna have one of each of these on hand the right stage? So. Uh, let's start here at the steps because we shot this our last match and I'm going to tell you how I shot it. Uh, I didn't even use a bipod, but I saw other guys use bipods and I want to analyze what, what you might use a bipod or how you might use a bipod on this prop. You know, this is a prop that we did shoot the last match. Now I shot it with a tripod. So I put my bag on the front here. I had the tripod right back here on the back. I stabilized it with the tripod and I sh that's how I shot this. I did not use a bipod, but I saw people using bipods and I have to tell you, they had a hard time with it because let's look at this first candidate here, which is the AccuTac. Here's the challenge. I want you to watch this. Look at that. I have very little space, if any, to, to, to have any room for error if I'm gonna use a bipod here and a bag back here. These legs are barely on these steps, but I saw guys trying this and they were doing this, they were doing this, they were falling off, they were, this doesn't work for this. And the gun is unloaded, guys. What if I do the 45? Now that gives me a little more room, see, right? So they fit on there. I could have done this and I could have just brought this back now I've got this out here, I've got the bag here. Let's say I've got a bag 
and now I'm good on target. But I'm telling you what, that tripod just worked out great. So in this instance, this bipod could work because at 45, the legs come in and it's a lot better. Let's look at the MDT. If I bring these down normally, normally, they fit, right? So, so they fit pretty good there. Uh, I did get this lever, by the way. I think I told you in the opening I was gonna get one. I got one and I put it on here. So these still fit on here pretty good. The can't on this. Um, we're gonna talk about that. Or, right, or I could bring these in. And again, I'm fidgeting with this so I can figure out how to do it. Bring both these in like this. I could bring them uh, uh, forward so I could bring them to 45 like I did the other one. And now I've got that. So that's got even a smaller footprint here, right, to deal with, which might not be bad. So I would run this up, bring that in, and now we're good, right? So you could, I could have shot it like this too. Honestly, <coughs> as I said, I didn't want to screw around with the, tri the bipod, a bag in the back, doing this with the bag and when, when the tripod works just fantastic for me. But in this case, both of these would have worked on these steps. This is the stage that I really thought this bipod, the MDT Skypod, would be built for, right? So you've got these tires, you have to shoot off the tires. Now you can do it a number of different ways. You can just use a bag here and shoot off the tire down range. Some people use a bipod. I tend to use just a bag, but sometimes I have used a bipod. So let's look at how this might, might work. This tire especially is what I was looking at, right? I'm sorry it's so windy. But when you look at this, if I deploy this down, down, all the way out, all the way out, so you can see, right? I've got it deployed all the way out here. Gun is unloaded. I can now come here, set it on that position, and I'm good. Or I could even deploy the legs fully out like this. Now let's say my, the, our target was 500 yards away about that direction. Look at that. Now I can come down on the rifle, use my bag, steady it, and I am on the target we were shooting right here. So I'm on the target, rack around, and I'm good. Now, if I move to the other tires, what happens? Can I use it here? I can't do that here. So what I would do is I'd probably take this out, take this out to 45, and then I would try to make it work here right? And I probably could, but you, you see where I'm going with this, guys. It starts to get, it starts to get iffy when you have to move between tires. If they didn't have this one overlapping this one, I could do what I just did up here. And, and again, I'm not trying to give you a, a clinic on how to shoot the tires. I'm just saying, if you decide to use a bipod, you're going to be, you're, you're, you're going to be jacking around with this thing the whole time you're shooting now it might be too far out right because if maybe what if i want my bag back here on the bag rest then i've got to adjust it so i'm just saying this was one stage i was really excited about this bipod about but it was one tire i was excited about and i don't want to have to uh screw around with adjusting a bipod the whole time I'm shooting this thing, right? I'm, I'm much more comfortable, now this is the wrong bag, but I'm much more comfortable just coming down here, getting on the target, I'm on the target, boom, boom, right? And, and these tires aren't that stable, but still, and when you shoot off this tire, right, what are you gonna do with your, with your bipod, right? It's, it's much easier to come here with a bag, come down on it, get down, get under the rifle, I'm on target, stabilized it, boom, I, I'm, I'm shooting, right? This is the AccuTac. So here's how we would start. Here, here, down on, 
rack, fire rack, fire, then I deploy the legs. So I'm pointing down on the legs, down on the legs, they're deployed. I'm going over here to this tire, setting up, down on my knees, rack, fire, rack, fire, and I come up to this one, same thing. I haven't had to adjust anything. I'm on the target. Rack, fire, rack, fire. Down to the next one. On it. On target. Rack, fire, rack, fire. And then let's look at how I do this last tire. All right, this last one, I'd probably set the bag, and I can just bring this out, set it, come down, use my cant, I'm on the target, bam, bam. I'm not set up perfectly, I should have my knees a little further apart, but this is how I could run this thing, and it worked very, very nicely with the AccuTac. Bring up, bring up, and we're good. So, I would say that really with both these bipods on a stage like this, it's a push. Uh, and as I said, this was a huge reason I was really uh, psyched about this Skypod. Uh, but really, I probably won't use it. So let's move on to one more prop. All right, the next example is going to be you're shooting a stage like this, maybe even prone. Uh, you can't put your rifle on the prop to see if, if you've got everything set up properly height-wise. You get on the prop and you have to adjust. The, the first thing might be, let's say that we have to bring this, uh, this bipod up. So, we're off. Buzzer goes off. I put my rifle down. I'm getting behind it. I come onto it and I go, oh crap, I need more height on my bipod, right? So with this one, again, I'm just gonna click, 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 and now I'm up, I'm back on the gun and I'm good, right? Or let's say we start the stage and we had this adjusted for the previous stage. I set it down and I go, crap, I'm way too high, down, down, I'm on the gun, right? So that's the AccuTac. Let's look at the uh, Skypod. Same situation with the Skypod. I'm off, buzzer goes off. I get in position, I set the rifle. I get down on the rifle. Crap, I need more elevation. Zoom that out. I'm gonna come up on two, on two, and I'm there, right? So about the same on both, and then I need to lower it. I'm down, and I'm down. So both of these work the same in that regard, uh, I'm gonna tell you click-wise, I kind of like the AccuTac better. Uh, I think you've got a little more refined adjustment in it for something like this, but they both do uh, a really fine, fine job. All right, well, I thought I'd just do final thoughts out here at the range. It really is a good day. It's overcast, a little warm, a little humid, and a lot windy, but any day out here at the range is a great day. So we looked at these two bipods. Remember, I sold the Atlas because, honestly, the Atlas is just in a different league uh, than these. These are in a, in a higher league, in my opinion, in my opinion. And we looked at both these bipods. Let's go over them. Uh, some final thoughts from me and what I think I'm going to go with. I'm going to start with the Skypod. Skypod, really good, really good bipod. I will tell you though that from a from a operational perspective, there is just too much to think about for me. Uh, way too much to think about. Um, you you've got so many different things that you've got to deal with. I can I can bring the legs down like this. It's great. They can 45. Yes, I can even then bring them out. Uh, you know, as we saw way out here, the leg extensions, just a pull, fantastic, right? To bring them back, I just press and then I have to manually bring them in, which is no big deal. But I'm gonna tell you a couple things that aren't so good. 
Like right now, I can bring this, I can bring this up and it's great. But depending on what you do with this cant knob that I bought, this cant lever, it might get in your way. So you may be down here and you set the cant, but you set it to there. And now, see, look, I'm already screwing around. Now when I try to bring this up, look, I can't bring this up. My cant knob's in the way. Now I have to deal with a cant knob, get it out of the way. Then I, I keep bringing these out for some reason because they're up here and I'll point that out to you. Uh, now I can bring it up. But the other thing that you just saw with this was, again, too much stuff to deal with for me, for me. The other thing is I have a, a bad habit of, every time I touch this thing, the leg extends because it extends from the top, from the top. One last thing about the SkyPod, Guys, I'm really sorry. MDT, I'm really sorry. I'm your biggest fan. I've got your chassis, your weight kits. I love your products. This thing is just flimsy. Now, it's built that way, I guess. That's what I read. That's fine. But I just feel that this thing's going to fall apart if I put any real pressure on it. So I'm, 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 not, I'm not sold on the MDT SkyPod. Now let's look at the... AccuTac. And remember, these guys aren't giving me anything. I bought these bipods. I won this one in the in the uh, uh, Rimfire finale. <sighs> Here's what I love about it. It's the simplest bipod you'll ever use. <laughs> okay. If I want the legs to move, I pull and I adjust. Pull and adjust. Pull and adjust. 45 degrees. 45 degrees. I'm there. I want these to extend pull, pull. It's not at the top like the SkyPod. So as I'm adjusting this, I'm not pulling out the leg like you saw on the SkyPod. I can adjust this very firm. And when I want to bring these back, I'm not holding it down and pulling it back. It is spring loaded. So I love that about this. This thing, that's not moving guys. That is not moving with these out. That's moving a little bit, but not near as much as that SkyPod. And this part is not moving at all. So I have to say, uh, oh, and the cant adjustment on this one is very grainy. So it's not just falling over like it is on the SkyPod, right? So before I go into a, to a stage, if I've got this thing all the way canted down, I can literally just move this a, a pinch and now I can cant. The SkyPod, that can't, when you just touch that knob, it's open and, the, and your rifle's doing this. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry to say, I'm not sorry to say, I love this AccuTac and that's what I'm gonna go with. So uh, I hope this helped. Uh, you may have different needs. You may have different opinions. Maybe you've got an MDT and you love it. Good for you, I'm glad. I just think for half the cost, I can get two AccuTax for the same price as one SkyPod and get something that I, that I really like. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. I've got a lot more coming up. Uh, I'm still working on that 6BRA uh, ladder test, so I may publish that. I've got some uh, environmental uh, comparisons I want to talk to you about, and then just a few other things. So I really want to thank you for watching out here at the range today. Great day, and until next time, Shoot straight.